Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 10 out of Jake, man. I'm rocking with y'all. Like y'all rocking with me. For this video, I'm going to be speaking on a gay gangster. There's no other way to go about it. There's nothing else to call it. And there's never a reason to sugarcoat it. He wanted to be a gangster inside a prison. And he was mad that I exposed the fact that he was gay. And I didn't even really expose it, but I brought it up and pointed it out in front of a few people. And I'm going to tell y'all the story of how this came about. I like you, he like you, and I want you. And he you. Now, we can do this the easy way, or we can do it the hard way. The choice is yours. What you want, Tom? What's it going to be? Now, of course, I was at Appalachian Correctional Institution. If you've been rocking with me for a minute, you know about Appalachia. I don't really need to just keep telling y'all about this crazy-ass site camp. I was high custody, this, that, and the third. Blah, crazy people. It is what it is. It's a Florida site camp, so you know you're going to have the worst of the worst. Now, Mike, who I just did a video on, if y'all remember White Mike, the kid that I'm talking about got put in the room with Mike. This kid came into the dorm, and I mean, everyone's staring at him first quarter. Everyone's looking at him. His face attracts attention because the whole damn thing was tattooed. This kid was from Fort Myers, 239, they call it Lil' Pakistan. So he had Lil' Pakistan or Pakistan or some shit tatted across his forehead. He had an AK, praying hands, he had a cross. He had all types of different shit. Or it wasn't a cross, it was like a northern star, but it looked like a cross. He just had a whole bunch of shit. He looked dumb as fuck, to be honest. It's funny when people that look like Napoleon Dynamite get a face full of tattoos and think that somebody's going to be intimidated, you know what I mean? And when you've been in prison, it loses that shock value. So, you know, maybe when you walk around at your local Walmart or Target or some shit and you see somebody with a face full of tats, you're like, oh, damn, he looked crazy. But in prison, you get used to it. It's not, it doesn't have that factor anymore. And you can honestly see past it and see their face and see... That same person before they ended up fucking their whole face up. It's just, it's not intimidating how people assume it's going to be. And another thing that really isn't respected is when somebody gets a face full of prison ink. Unless you have a life sentence, I've seen it. Most of these kids, it's within their first three years, they do their whole goddamn face because they think it's going to give them a status symbol. I'm a killer. I'm about that. I don't give a fuck my life. And we used to joke about that shit at something to see. Uh, man, tat your face up. Fuck my life. Like, we was just on some stupid shit. But we were 14 to 18 years old. So the mentality matched the age. So he comes in. He's got a bag full of shit. Face full of stupidity. And he goes into Mike's cell. Mike's cell, cell one, is right next to cell two. Where me and Bimba are at. And I hit up Bimba yesterday and asked him, Hey, bro, do you remember dude's name? He's like, nah, I remember his fucking face, though. <laughs> it's like I told y'all. He had a face you can remember, but we don't remember his name because we never really associated with dude like that, aside from Mike being his bunkie. Now, anyone that first comes into the dorm, they're pretty quiet. They stay to themselves. He was in his cell. He come out in the day room, watch some TV. And then he started to sit at the tables, and he would sit at a table by himself and start, you know, making a beat or whatever. And people are naturally going to walk by, peep games, see what you're doing. And if you acting like you can rap, people want to hear you rap, you know what I mean? And they want to hear what it be about and if you good or whatever. And this kid, he got on the table, he's hitting the beats, straight trash, horrible, terrible, should never rap again. It was the worst shit I ever heard. And my brother Rambo, I told y'all how disrespectful and no filter Rambo is. Rambo was standing at the table listening to him, looking at him like this. And when he got done, Rambo was just like, man, that shit garbage. <laughs> like Rambo didn't give a fuck if he felt disrespected because Rambo knows he'll beat the dog shit out of him. You know what I mean? Like. Rambo just has that mentality. It doesn't matter if dude is 10 times bigger. Rambo doesn't care. Rambo's missing something up here. He has no feelings for that, but that's for another story. So he's kind of already like getting punked in a sense, but supposedly 
He's got respect on the compound. I mean, he's not new to the compound. He was in a different dorm or whatever. And he seems to associate with some of the GDs in the dorm, specifically Kid, who I made the Insane Gangster Disciple video about. And he wasn't a GD, so let's clarify that now. He wasn't gangbanging. He was just on his 239 Little Pakistan Fort Myers shit. You know what I mean? He was on his rap shit. He had a little fake rap group called Taliban Gang or some shit like that, and you know, he was just focused on the rapping, and all he would talk about is rappers, his favorite rapper was Boosie, he wanted to get Boosie tatted on him, and I find it funny that he wanted to get that tattoo, because his lifestyle and way of living is not like Boosie's whatsoever, you know what I mean, Boosie ain't rocking behind the shit that this kid was getting into, but we're gonna jump into that. Now, like I said, we weren't really associating with Buddy like that. We weren't really fucking with him. We weren't really that cool with him. But we're around him and we see the type of shit that he's doing and the type of people that he's associating with. Birds of a feather flock together, you know what I'm saying? And I was under the assumption that, you know, he's just cool with Kid. And off of that right there, there's a possibility that the GDs might rock behind him. You know, everyone likes to say, oh, I was cool with the gang members, but I ain't gang banging. That's why I don't like neutrons, per se, because a lot of them affiliate with gangs, but don't get punished or don't have to hold themselves to that gang's law. So they can do flaw shit and not get punished for it versus that gang. They're not allowed to do that bullshit. But it's only with certain neutrons. You know what I mean? It's not everybody. Some of them, they just, they have values and morals. Their damn self. They don't need a gang to tell them how they should live their life. They know how to live life respectfully, morally, the right way to do things. So I find out that this kid went to church, right? And while he was at church, he got sucked up by a punk in the bathroom. And this was a notorious punk on the compound. Everybody knew of this punk's name because this punk is getting ran through by damn near 80% of this compound. Supposedly, the punk had like three different strains of fucking AIDS. I never heard of no shit like that. Uh, even having different strains of AIDS or just whatever this sick shit is. And mind you, this kid is close to my age. I'm 20 at the time. So he was in his 20s. He was probably like close to the 25. You know what I mean? But he's young. And he goes and does what he does with a punk. And like I told you, church, if it isn't for gang meetings, that's usually where the punks will meet up. Because the preacher man is very naive and he'll just sit behind the desk so they slip into the bathroom and they handle their business. And that's why we are told never to go to church. Doesn't matter if you're a Christian, don't go to church. Because it's filled with a whole bunch of fuckery. So unless you're going there with one of your people that can verify that you were not involved in the fuckery, don't even go because a rumor can start and now you got to hurt something to prove your point. So to just avoid the drama, don't go to church. So push come to shove, buddy come back into the dorm. You know what I mean? And we all used to smoke with Mike. I don't believe I ever smoked with this kid, but after hearing that, we damn sure are never going to smoke with this kid because we know what you're into now. You might... Have some shit, you know what I mean? And I was the orderly at night. So what that means is I used to have the broomstick and I would just sweep up the dorm. I didn't have an outside job where I got to go push lawnmowers or whatever other type of jobs that there are. I just stayed inside and I swept up and that was it. And it was pretty much just an excuse to be outside of my cell. So that night I'm outside sweeping and he got on the door. He was on cell one. And he asked me some shit. I forget what it was that he asked me. He either was just saying something to me or asking me to pass something along. But I pretty much just told him, don't talk to me. And he was like, damn, like, you know what I mean? What, what's the animosity about? Like, why this pressure? I was like, bro, you gay, bro. And he was like, I'm gay. What you mean I'm gay? I'm like, you fucking gay. You got your dick sucked. You gay. He's like, and this is what blows my mind. He defended himself on this. He's like, bro, you making it sound like I was the one sucking. 
It doesn't make a damn difference. What the fuck is the difference? You like that was your defense? How you gonna explain fucking a man? Even if we squash the beef, I ain't touching the head. I and I just told him like, bro, you fucking gay. Don't talk to me. And he acted like he had a problem with it. So I got on his door, the door that he was on, and I asked him like, what's up? Is it pressure? Man, I gave y'all niggas the business for fucking with me. Like you feel some type of way about you being gay? And as I'm saying these things, I'm saying them loud. I'm the only one not in his cell besides one other orderly that's like further down. And everyone in their cell can hear what I'm saying to him. So this is being broadcasted to pretty much the majority of the dorm. Like if they didn't know, they know now. You know what I mean? And you getting down with the fuck shit. Kid was already getting down with the fuck shit. He already had a full-blown boy on the compound. You know what I mean? So you hanging around motherfuckers that got boys and partaking that shit. It's only right to see you do the same bullshit because that's who you hanging around. You know what I mean? The only reason there was ever any communication with Kid is due to the fact that he was a gang member and he was a gang member that was rocking on that compound with that organization. So if any word between my people needed to go through his people or vice versa, we would have that communication. But this is a damn neutron or nobody, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not finna just talk to you like I need to talk to you with some type of fucking respect because it's not like we're gonna go to war. You ain't nobody to go to war with. Like you gonna get took off the compound real quick. So I'm on his door asking him if it's pressure. He's like, nah, nah, it's straight, it's straight. You know what I'm saying? Like kind of playing it off or whatever. And I'm looking at Mike's reaction. Mike ain't really doing nothing. But Mike, cool. He chilling. You know what I mean? You probably high on K2. So push come to shove. I go back into my cell. I hear a scraping sound. Shk, shk, shk. First quarter, I'm like, oh, he making a knife. You know what I mean? He's in there strapping up. He's shopping some shit up right now. So Bimba's already on point. Because we're right next to their cell. Of course, we're going to hear the shit, you know, in two seconds. Like, it is what it is. There's no way to hide it. When you're shopping up a knife, I mean, literally, like, five cells down is going to hear what you're doing. So, in my mind, I'm thinking he's kind of bold because you know I know what you're doing. You know I hear you. So, it's like your way of telling me strap up like we finna go through about this shit and at the time you know we had a big ass poker in the room it was a nail that goes down into the ground and holds the fence down so it's like this here it's like that thick you're in the cell next to mine so my whole plan and i'm running it through with bimba of course bimba got my back he finna rock out behind me and this dude we were about the same height so six foot six one He's skinnier than a motherfucker. I'm skinnier than a motherfucker. But I'm going to get to you. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get to you. This ain't my first time. This ain't my first run with this shit. And I'm just plotting in my head. Like, all right, early ass in the morning, when these doors pop, the second he comes out of his cell, I'm going to try to put this poker through his cheek and just knock out as many fucking teeth as I can. I'm pretty sure he's not really going to want to do whatever he thought he was going to do. Once he's got some metal... Sticking out of his fucking mouth. You know what I mean? That was my plan, but... I'm sitting up the whole night thinking about this shit. And I got that nervous feeling in my stomach like I always got. is gonna happen regardless of what you do. We're right under the booth. Not under in the sense that we're under it. But when the booth is looking at us, we're direct vision. You know what I mean? Like, the booth is staring at us. Not only that, there's cameras. So there's no way I'm getting away with this shit. You know what I mean? I pretty much got to crash this kid before he crashes me. And it's like, I got to do it first. Because if I come out of the cell thinking shit sweet, who's to say he isn't just going to try to crash me in front of the day room and stab me? You know what I mean? It's going to happen one way or another. So somebody just got to pop and just, it is what it is. I finally go to sleep that night. I wake up. I'm strapped up. I'm ready to go. The door opens. I wait. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Mike comes out. He don't even come out. So I come up out of the cell. I sit on one of the tables. And I'm facing his cell. And I see him brushing his teeth. 
This, that, and the third. I'm talking to Mike. I'm like, what's up? Like, he's sharpening the knife. I'm about to do it to your bunkie right now. What? Nah, man, nah. He wasn't even sharp. I guess what he was trying to sharpen was a piece of something for a tattoo needle or some shit like that. That's what Mike said. That the sound of the grinding was him using whatever to sharpen up a tattoo needle because he wanted to get tatted. And like I said, this kid was inked up. But it sounded pretty hefty. For it to be something, you know, using a tattoo needle or something like that. Or tattoo equipment. Because, you know, there's a lot of shit you got to file down and get right to actually make the gun and make something to hold the gun. But I didn't fully believe Mike at that point. I was kind of skeptical about what he was saying. You know what I mean? But I flat out told him, like, your bunkie about to get hit. Like, it is what it is. And then Kid steps to me. So Kid got wind probably from just listening to the conversation itself. And Kid was in the third cell. So cell one, two, three. We're all next door neighbors type shit. So Kid comes up to me and Kid box at me. And he's like, hey, bro, you know, I just want to talk to you about this little situation. Like, he kind of like under my wing type shit. And I'm telling Kid flat out, like, well, I'm about to go and handle that with dudes since he feels some type of way. And Kid just repeats what he says, like, nah, like, I'm trying to tell you, like, he's under my wing type shit. So I'm like, bro, is this your jizzle or what? Like, is he your property? Like, do you own him, more or less? Like, just spit it out there. Because if that's not what it is, then you have no ties to him. Which means our beef is our beef unless you're involving yourself in it. And Kid pretty much told me, like, dog a jizzle. You know what I'm saying? Dog is under him. So I'm like, all right, bro. That's all you had to say. Keep your jizzle in check. You know what I'm saying? Like, keep your fucking jizzle in check then. Tell your jizzle not to talk back to me. Fuck wrong with him. He should get slapped for that shit. And Kid ran down on him. Kid went inside of his cell and had that conversation with him. I don't know if he got slapped, but when he came out, he looked like a sad puppy. He was like, oh, head down and shit. And that's a big thing with these fucking neutrons that say they rock with gang members. And this is why I clearly state this a few times in some of these different videos. I'd rather be around the gang members because you have people that put on these fronts. I ran into this same situation at Lancaster when me and Lil Ron from Robles Park in Tampa, we ran down on Buddy with the poker. We took the food that he had and come to find out he was a jizzle under the Latin Kings. So we had to give the food back because us and the Kings was like this. And we just didn't know. And a lot of these people be under extortion, but they pay so that they don't have to be exposed. And then they'll be like, oh, but the gang members eat with me. It's not like I was just getting my food took. They eat with you because it's your fucking food. No shit. Hey, bro, come here, bro. I got a plate, bro. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, Buddy got exposed for what he was. And then once everyone knew, he was actively participating in this shit. He wasn't hiding it anymore. And this kid was like a sexual deviant. Because he had like 10 or 14 different gunning DIs. A gunning DI is when you masturbate looking at a staff member. Or you don't even have to look at a staff member. You, you just, you're not supposed to masturbate, period. But he was getting these disciplinary reports for either looking at nurses, looking at COs, or even looking at other inmates and masturbating. And when you get a certain amount of these disciplinary reports, from what I heard... You can actually become a sex offender. And he was like right on that verge or if not already did become a sex offender. Which is crazy, but this is prison. This is the reality of going to prison. If you do not want to be around this type of bullshit, fuckery, drama, you got to stay up out of prison. And inside of prison, you have to learn to adapt. You have to learn... To live around these type of people and these type of living situations. And if you can handle yourself and conduct yourself without having to kill anybody inside of prison, then you should be able to handle yourself out here, especially when you have the freedom to avoid people and stay away from the drama. But hey, it's 1090J. I'm rocking with y'all. Let y'all rocking with me. Till next time.